happy Thursday everybody in today's video we are gonna be talking about waltz this is our third video in our little series what we're gonna really talk about today is some of the technique that we use in waltz or in some of your smooth dancing that's gonna be really important first we're gonna talk about how we are gonna use our feet and our legs to help us travel better and more effectively when you watch um, any smooth dancing waltz foxtrot tango Viennese waltz there are some of these elements where we are gonna be traveling more, we need to move across the floor easier. So what we're gonna talk about first is heel leads and toe leads. So I'm gonna back up a little bit. Now, for a heel lead, it's kind of self-explanatory, meaning whoever is traveling forward, so either gentlemen, it's mainly in your leads, but there will be some patterns down the road that you will switch back and forth. So it's good to practice both a heel lead and a toe lead. What's required to happen in a heel lead is we soften our knees. And what you're gonna think about is it's almost like a kind of ice skating or roller blade type of effect that we will have a little glide in it. So we soften our knees. We'll start with our left leg. You're gonna put that left leg out with the heel first. So my toes are pointed up. You're gonna extend it out you can see how I can balance between the two, between my toe and my heel, and then all you're gonna do is push onto your foot. So we'll go back and try that again. So soften your knees a little, put that heel out, extend it, balance, good, and then use your right foot to push onto the left foot. So you could do this, what I like to do is a great way to practice this is if you have a long hallway you can practice kind of going up and down the hallway. Um, if you have hardwood, you can practice it in your socks. That or else just be careful doing it on some sur surfaces, you might get a little stuck. So we soften the knees, we extend out, then you bring your right foot underneath, and then you'll do the exact same. So it's gonna have kind of that rolling effect. Now the polar opposite is gonna be your toe lead. So, Mainly us ladies, this is how we are gonna start our waltz. It's basically the opposite. So same thing, we soften our knees, but we're gonna put our toe out as far as we can kind of reach, and we're going to push onto it so you could still balance between the two here. You don't wanna be going so far that you can't push onto it. Enough that you can balance in between your toe and your heel, and then push all the way on. Then you'll bring your left leg underneath, extend the toe, push onto it. So here's an example of a heel lead. I'm going forward, forward. And then here's an example of a toe lead. I'm gonna extend that toe, I extend that toe. And that's gonna be really important to help your waltz start gliding across the floor. You'll be able to travel more. This is gonna make it seem more smooth. The other element that we start to have in some of our smooth dances, mainly waltz is a great example of it, is we do rise and fall. So I have a couple different exercises that will really, really help to get you good at this. This is also a lot of balance and control that's gonna be needed through your body, your legs, and it's a good workout. So the first part I like to start with is you can either have a wall, you can use a hand on, a chair, something to hold on to in case you lose your balance, or you can have it close and nearby and practice doing it without. The first part that I like to do is starting with your feet. So for some people who work out, this is almost known as a cap raise. So what you're gonna do is you start with your feet flat, you're gonna rise up onto the balls of your feet, keeping your legs straight this whole time. So really it's working those calf muscles. So you're pulling yourself up onto the toes, don't be afraid to hold it for a couple seconds and then come back down. So really practicing this a couple of times. And again, if you need to hold on to something, you're more than welcome to. This is gonna start to feel that muscles and those calves start to burn a little bit. So you can do that a couple times to get started. Then what we have to incorporate is the knees and the hips a little bit. Hips just meaning that we're soft through them, that we're not sitting super rigid but what we really need to incorporate now is the knees because in the section before when I was talking about the heel leads and toe leads, we soften our knees before we go. So we are gonna soften our knees, come up on our toes, 
and straighten everything. Then we come down and soften everything. Go up, soften. So you should feel your toes, your ankles, your knees, your knees, your ankles, your toes. And it's just a smooth progression. Now, this is a type of exercise you don't wanna rush through it. Keep it slow to build up that balance and control. Sure, you can go fast, but waltz is slower. And also, this is gonna be for building up your muscles. The slower you go, the better you're gonna do with this. So same thing, soften the knees. Start to rise up, get up as tall as you can, stretching the core, and hold it. How long can you hold that position? Holding, 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 and then coming down soft. Good, and then we do it to a couple more times. Holding, and coming down very softly. You should almost feel when you come down that your heels come down so ever so softly that they don't make any noise. A lot of the times when you're in the studio dancing or out dancing, when you hear somebody who've maybe lost their balance or their control, you'll hear them hit their heels on the floor. So this is why this is a really easy way, you don't need a lot of space, to be able to work on that rise up and coming down with all the control you could have. Rising up, staying flat with your feet, try not to roll throughout your foot, so you can have as much balance and control as possible. So we'll do it one more time. So soften, rise up, rise up, rise up, up onto your tippy toes, stay super tall, hold it. And then come down ever so slowly with control. Now if I put this into the box of your waltz, it's gonna have a, what I kinda almost call it, is it like a carousel effect. It's gonna go down, up, up, down, up, up. So for a gentleman, your first step, we lower with that heel lead. Then we go to the side, there's a little bit of a rise. On that collection, that's your final rise. Then you'll start to lower so you can extend the foot. Then over to the side and there's some rise. Final rise is when we close. So down, up, up, down, up, and then lower, down, up, up, down, up, up. Ladies, it's the same idea, just reverse. So, going backwards, we lower to extend to the side, up, and then up once you're close, then heel lead forward to the side, up, up, down, down, up, up, and then we lower again. So again, these are some of the mechanics that you can start incorporating in the patterns that I taught last time, even in your basic box, but even just take a couple minutes. Work on that rise and fall and balance and control in place. Then put it into your box. And again, it's gonna be something that you might not get perfect every single time, and you're gonna have moments where like, oh, this step is a lot easier, others might be a little harder. One of the other things that I can, that I've done before, is for some people who do like going to the gyms, when they do open back up, you can get on the leg press machine and you can actually do this action with a little bit of resistance. Put some weight to it, just a little bit at a time, but you can actually practice that rise and fall with some of the equipment at the gym as well something that a lot of people don't think about. So next time what we'll do is we'll start talking about how we incorporate all of it, and then I'll have a fun little surprise for you guys. Hope you guys are staying safe, stay positive. Can't wait to see all your faces again, and have a great Thursday. Bye!